Well, we've been hearing uh, rumors about this, and uh, now they are confirmed. Google at DeepMind announced that their Gemini with DeepThink officially achieved a gold medal standard at the International Mathematical Olympiad. So this means that both OpenAI and Google DeepMind achieved the gold medal. They both achieved it with large language models. That's an important point to understand. And they earned 35 out of a possible 42 points. They solved five out of six problems on the IMO. The OpenAI model also solved five of the six problems and earned 35 out of the 42 points. So it seems like that six problem is the really hard one. And that's the true AGI test or whatever, the new benchmark, whatever you want to call it. Now, interestingly, we did have five people, I believe, placing first. We have Ivan, Zhang, Deng, Warren, and Satoshi. So interestingly, that means they solved that final six problem, getting the seven points, getting the score of 42. All right, so the two models from OpenAI and Google DeepMind solved the first five. They missed the last one and the humans, the first place winners, of course, got everything. Perfect score, 42. So who said we're obsolete? We're still in the race. Now, really quickly, I have to point out that OpenAI has been under a lot of fire since they announced the results. We don't know all the details, so I'm not going to try to guess at exactly what happened. Let me just kind of show you what different sides are presenting. Now, there is a rumor that the IMO asked the AI companies to not steal the spotlight from kids and to wait a week after the closing ceremony to announce the results. OpenAI announced the results before the closing ceremony. I don't think this is true. CEO of Google DeepMind provides some details later. Now, Noam Brown of OpenAI did respond to those allegations. This is somebody that's highly respected in the space, so I tend to believe what he's saying is 100% true. He's saying we posted after the closing ceremony. It was live stream, so this is easy to confirm. He said, we were not in touch with the IMO. I spoke with one organizer before the post to let him know. He requested we wait until after the closing ceremony ends to respect the kids, and we did. And as far as he knows, he was the only person at OpenAI that talked to the IMO. So as far as I can tell, Google did go officially through the IMO. OpenAI did not officially go through those channels, but they did solve that test. And I'm just going based on the information that we have available. So it sounds like OpenAI used previous IMO winners to grade these problems. So here per Alexander Wei, one of the leads on this project from OpenAI. So he's saying three former IMO medalists independently graded the models submitted proof. So some people are questioning this, but the point is, as of right now, as it stands, as far as we can tell, both OpenAI and Google DeepMind have identical scores identical problem solved. They both did it with a large language model and to end with natural language, as in they didn't have to translate the problems into proofs. In case you're not aware, so Google did get the silver medal on the IMO in 2024, but they did so with Alpha Geometry 2 and Alpha Proof. So these are specific AI models made for mathematics. These weren't sort of the general purpose LLMs. And so the problems had to be manually translated into formal mathematical language for the systems to understand, right? So that was last year. That's what Google used to get the silver medal. This is what Noam Brown means when he's saying that the IMO reached out to them, to OpenAI, months ago, offering to provide lean versions of the problems immediately after the competition. So these were the, you know, translated into the lean language in order to be understood by these models because that's how things have been done in the, in the previous years. But in 2025, both Google and OpenAI just use LLMs that could just read the problems just like you and I would. The model they used is Gemini with DeepThink. Now, it seems like they used a fine-tuned version of it. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But Gemini DeepThink will be available to us. According to a Google release, this model is currently being tested by 
trusted testers, red teamers, and will be rolling out to the Google AI, the Ultra Plan. So this plan, the Google AI Ultra Plan, that model will be rolling out to users of this plan. How they're describing it here, this sounds like a fine-tuned version of it. So they're saying, we additionally trained this version of Gemini on novel reinforcement learning techniques. They leverage more multi-step reasoning, problem solving, and theorem proving data. And that they give it access to a curated corpus of high quality solutions to mathematics problems. And added some general hints and tips on how to approach IMO problems to its instructions. And that they will be making a version of this DeepThink model available to trusted testers and then rolling out to the Google AI Ultra subscribers. So again, sounds like this was a fine tuned version of this model. And then the regular version of this model will be rolling out to you know all of us on the plan. This Gemini Deep Think incorporates some of the latest research techniques, including a parallel thinking. This enables the model to simultaneously explore and combine multiple possible solutions before giving the final answer. So I'd love to see some research. Hopefully they'll post this in the system card because Grok4 Heavy uses something that seems to be similar. So I'd love to see how Google approached it. And we don't know too much about exactly what Grok4 Heavy does behind the scenes. Google tends to be transparent, publish a lot more of their research. So it'd be very, very interesting to see how they did this. And while all the problems, the test was completed within for the 4.5 hour competition time limit, just like humans would, we really don't have an idea of how many tokens it used, how much compute it used, right? So basically how expensive it would be to run these models to get these very impressive results on these tests. For example, for the ARC AGI test, there was some estimate that was something like 300,000 it would cost in you know, API credits, API cost to run the model to solve those problems. And here, as Noam Brown puts it, he's saying that this model thinks for a long time, right? So he's talking about the OpenAI model, but we're assuming that, you know, the Gemini model also does the same thing, you know, thinks for a long time. And not only that, but it sounds like it's got multiple kind of thought processes running in parallel. We don't know how many. You know, with Grok for Heavy, it seems like they have four agents running. Gemini is a deep think. They're saying instead of one single linear chain of thought, it's exploring multiple possible solutions. So I wonder what multiple means. Under Google DeepMind's post, Elon Musk commented, while a notable milestone, this is already borderline trivial for AI. Whatever the case is, here's kind of the big idea to grasp. In the past few months, there's been a number of papers on novel RL techniques. So we're learning to teach these large language models to get better at stuff, whether that's coding or math or anything of the sort through novel reinforcement learning techniques. With software engineering, it's a little bit more difficult because it's harder to get verifiable rewards. Verifiable rewards are easy, binary, zero or one, good or bad. And being able to tie reinforcement learning to those rewards makes it easy to do that sort of training. If you ask a dog to sit, he either does or does not, it's pretty easy to tell. There's a little ambiguity there. If you're trying to train them to be nicer to the cat, all of a sudden, that's a whole lot more ambiguous. You can break that down into smaller kind of approximations of that behavior, but that could be, you know, reward hacked as these models tend to do. Now, Google didn't really give us a hint as to what some of these novel RL techniques are. Hopefully that's coming soon when they post more information. Maybe they'll have some sort of papers published on archive or on their blog that we can read and maybe find out more. But Noam Brown did give us a hint. As he says here, they've developed new techniques that make LMs a lot better at hard to verify tasks. You've seen me talking about this picture before. So it used to be all of our compute, all of the, the hardware, all the hours, the GPUs going burr, all of that went towards the pre-training compute. GPT-4, GPT-4.0, that was all of it pre-training compute. And starting with the reasoning models, we saw some fraction of that going to RL compute or on top of it. So you have your base model, you make your reasoning model by throwing more compute at specific these reinforcement learning pipelines, let's call them. Over time, they're expecting that this, the RL compute will grow and grow and grow. 
eventually the amount of compute that we put towards pre-trained models, it, it might still be large, but by comparison, the RL compute will be many, many times bigger. Elon Musk, for example, used the Colossus a data center, the biggest sort of amount of compute in the world located in one place. He threw 10 times the RL compute at training Rock 4 than the previous model. Now, Elon Musk is a very polarizing figure. So you're going to hear a lot of people say either this is the worst model ever or the best model ever. Feel free to ignore both sides. The reality is this is a very interesting model in that we took a okay-ish model, we threw an insane amount of RL compute at it, and we got Grok 4. This is a simple bench. One of the people behind it is Mr. AI Explained himself, a great AI YouTube channel. In his most recent video, he, he did note that Grok did very well on this benchmark that he specifically designed to try to prevent these LMs from gaming them or just training on them. It's a, it's a very specific benchmark that's different from a lot of the other benchmarks. I would describe it as very simple puzzles if you can ignore the red herrings, right? So kind of like the, the noise all the extra details that are provided, if you can just ignore those, the question itself is usually fairly simple. It's like if I, if I said, what happens if I let go of this pen and I spent the next hour talking about the gravitational pull of the planets and how they rotate around the sun, or the answer is like the pen would just fall to the floor. Me talking about the rotation of the planets has no effect on that, but large language models tend to fall for stuff like that if they've seen a similar problem in their training data. They tend to go with the more likely answer. So they tend to get a lot of these wrong. Grok does pretty well. The only thing higher is Gemini 2.5 Pro. Here's who I thought had the most intelligent take on this whole situation. This is Willa Brown. He's saying, I'm much more inclined to say that the RL system inside OpenAI is AGI rather than any fixed model checkpoint which comes out of it. And now with the results from Google DeepMind, maybe we can also kind of say the same thing about Google DeepMind. Inside those companies, it seems like they have a university for large language models. Or as Andre Karpathy puts it, he calls it like a, a gym for RL, for reinforcement learning, which might be a better analogy, right? So we train these models, these large language models come out containing a lot of the data on the internet and textbooks and everywhere else. And then they go to a gym or a boot camp to learn how to do stuff, how to do math, how to do coding, etc. The model that emerges, that's that sort of model checkpoint. It's a version of it. Whereas Google DeepMind puts it, we'll be making a version of this model available to testers, then to Google AI Ultra. Sam Altman pretty much said the same thing. And while we're all sort of impressed at the various models that are coming out, the real AGI, the real secret sauce is what's inside these companies, the LM factory that produces them. Any intuition for what these algorithmic advances might be? Getting self-verification, self-generation of a learning curricula to work at scale would count as AGI in my book. So if you've been following this channel, the one thing they often say is that we see papers published, you know, six to 12 months before we see the results emerge in these AI labs as, as products, as models, etc. So we've been seeing a lot of research papers that have been kind of leading up to this with things like Absolute Zero Reasoner, with DeepSeek's R10, some of the reinforcement learning papers that we've covered. But really, I think the big hint about where all of this is going, we learned quite a long time ago, in AI years at least, and that was the Alpha Zero lesson. And in fact, a lot of these new papers reference this when they call it DeepSeek R10 or Absolute Zero Reasoner. That's what I believe they're referring to, zero human data. This idea that for AI to get really good at something, we don't necessarily need to give it rules and strategies and human data. We need to figure out how to get it to teach itself through self-play, through generating synthetic data, self-verification, self-generation of a learning curricula, right? All of this is the next big step. And this is the same lesson even from Google's silver medal at the IMO last year. It was done without handcrafted rules, no curated data sets, just synthetic theorems. 
it created some curriculum and then it studied that curriculum and it got really good at mathematical reasoning. It's the same lesson we're learning, the alpha zero lesson. This I think will be the next really big wave that's going to drive AI progress forward. We had scaling laws that were talking about the pre-trained compute. Then with reasoning models, we had a test time compute. So how much time and tokens and uh, GPU hours we allow them to, to burn while they were thinking. And this just might be the biggest leap forward yet, because in a sense, we are allowing AI to take the reins in AI development. And just as I'm wrapping up, Demis Hasabis just posted on the IMO win, the gold medal. And here he shines some light on maybe what happened. He's saying, by the way, as an aside, we did not announce on Friday because we respected the IMO's board's original request that all AI labs share the results only after the official results have been verified by independent experts and the students had rightly received the acclamation they deserved. The rest of the information is what we already covered from the blog post. But let me know what you think about this. First of all, did OpenAI jump the gun, or do you think it was done intentionally against IMO's instructions so that they could sort of steal the thunder from Google? Certainly, we know OpenAI loves doing that. Certainly, this is a tough one because both Demis and Noam Brown are very highly respected people in the space. I don't expect any of them to lie about these things. But let me know, shenanigans or just a simple misunderstanding? Also, as impressive as these results are, do you agree with the fact that, yeah, it's almost becoming a little bit more commonplace? A little bit more expected. We're like, yeah, well, of course it gets the gold medal at the IMO. By the way, keep in mind, this is happening far more sooner than most people realized. The betting markets were pegging the chances of somebody winning gold, you know, an AI model winning gold at the IMO this year between 10 and 15 percent in the months leading up to this announcement. Eliezer Yudkowsky predicted that by 2025, there's a 16 percent chance that an AI model is going to get gold on the IMO. So again, even the people that tend to kind of think about the stuff and predict the stuff and tend to bet on this stuff happening quickly, even they were caught unaware. By the way, if you're wondering if the Gemini model talks just like the OpenAI model, sad to say it does not. It's a little bit more normal. The OpenAI model, while it you know, wrote out its proofs at length. It was very frugal with the English language. Google's solutions can be found here, and it does sort of write out full sentences and writes it kind of how you, you expect it to, to be written by a human, but not nearly as entertaining. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth, and I'll see you in the next one.